So the WBC chairman Mauricio Suleiman has released a statement explaining to the um, totality of boxing that uh, Benavidez and Canelo Alvarez have one more fight apart um, before David Benavidez will become full mandatory for uh, Canelo Alvarez. All right, so um, you can go through this. I'm not going to read it. I've read it, and I still didn't really care like I, I i skimmed through it when i read it type ish because i know this is just excuses and it's it's pr and it's it's trying to uh okay like he's trying to pass an okay idea so we can say canelo alvarez ain't ducking and so we can buy the next fight so i get it right i'm letting the promoters do their jobs and all that crap when y'all said the job was going to strip canelo alvarez uh, if he didn't fight Benavidez, so it, it's just going back on your words, which is something the BC does. I, bro, I'm not sold on that company. So that's what it is. The best thing that came out of this entire article was the last line. It says Benavidez becomes mandatory this coming March. All right, he becomes mandatory this coming March, so he's not officially mandatory, but he will become mandatory after Canelo Alvarez uh, pretty much announces who he's going to fight. Right, so Canelo going to announce by March because he's supposed to be trying to fight in May. So he would have announced already who he's going to fight. And then uh, we'll see Benavidez become mandatory for the winner of that fight, right? Which which opens up David Benavidez for one more fight, right? He has one more fight he can give us before saying Saul Canelo Alvarez. But I think I think that fight is, is obvious. Benavidez, if you got one more fight to give us, bro, you got one more to give us before you see the show, right? Before you go to the biggest stage of them all, the granddaddy of them all. You got to give us David Morrell, bro. That's just my opinion, and I know y'all trying to go after Christian and Billy. I do think it's a lit fight to see you and Christian and Billy, but let's keep it all the way up being. His style, Christian and Billy style, and this is no offense, but his style is tailor-made for David Benavidez to have an easy night of boxing if he comes out and fight Christian and Billy. I'm not saying he's going to beat Christian and Billy. That's two totally different things. But we're talking about styles making fights. They say styles make fights. If you think about a style, right, you think about Chris, Christian and Billy's style, it's brute strength, it's coming forward, it's laying the hat whenever he can lay the hat, trying to get you to the ropes, and mainly abandoning his defense at times just so he can land a very big boom, right? That's him. He, he had his opponent in a scenario where he was beating the hell out of his opponent uh, in his last fight. And then the opponent starts to have some success, bruh, uh, because he was abandoning his defense. He was just trying to go for the gusto, trying to get the knockout, and he started getting clocked. And it was a moment in the fight where it looked like the opponent was going to uh, turn the tides on him and maybe knock him out. So, yeah, it's an exciting fight to watch. But we know what the uh, Benavidez's are trying to do by going out to Christian and Billy. Y'all trying to get an easy night. You're trying to get an easy night to get the fight with Canelo Alvarez. That's the same thing people say about Ozzy Pitbull Cruz. He ain't take no real risk because he was so worried about getting Tank Davis. Right, he ain't take no real risk. Right, a lot of people sitting about Tank Davis right now. He ain't taking no real risk. He just he just out here fighting whoever he know he gonna knock out. Right, it don't matter as long as they got a name and he can knock him out. That's who he wanna fight. Right, but he ain't he ain't really stepping into the arena. See David Haney the whole nine. Right, you're saying that about Canelo Alvarez. Canelo ain't taking no real risk. He fighting everybody. Hell, me too. I'm saying it too, dog. I'm saying it too. All right, it is what it is. So Benavidez, you can't let us down by going out the Christian and Benny. You can't, bro. You got to step into the ring with David Morrell. That's the fight that everybody want to see. Let's keep it all the way up being here. Um, here's the thing. Morrell, I don't know if Benavidez can be Morrell, bro. I don't know. And here's the thing. At first, I thought this was going to be a clear shot. I say, man, you put this guy who got 10 fights. Well, at the time, he had nine fights. You put this guy with nine fights in the ring with David Benavidez. Benavidez is going to wash him. Right? He gonna watch him. Right? Then I seen the dude fight on the last pay-per-view for the PBC. I seen him. He fought against one of my homies in Center Agbeko. 
right? He 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 dominated them in the first round, right? I talked to Ag Beko after the fact, but we I'm just gonna keep that closed captions. But we ain't gonna talk about what happened between me and Ag Beko when we had the conversation about what happened in the fight. I'm just gonna leave that to interpretation, right? Anyways, saying that to say, bro, what I seen with my own two eyes, what I seen with my it's a, a gentleman that's on demon time, <laughs> bro. No offense, but he on demon time, bro. And at this particular point in time, I don't know if Benavidez can get past Morel. It's going to be a hell of a fight. When I say a hell of a fight, it's going to be a hell of a fight. It's one of those fights where we line them up, we don't know who's going to win. You're going to get people that's going to say Benavidez is going to win. You're going to get people that's going to say Morel going to win. If I'm being honest, I do think Benavidez because because he has the experience points. But when I think about the speed and the power and defensive awareness of David Morrell, that 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 kind of it throws me for a loop. I don't really know if Benavidez can do it. I'm still going to say he can do it, but I don't know. But I think this is the next best stop, right? This is the last stop before seeing Canelo Alvarez because you're going to leave 168. I highly doubt Benavidez stay at 168. And defend undisputed versus anybody. And why take undisputed to David Morrell? Right? Why why see that dangerous of an opponent and take undisputed there? Now you gave uh Caleb Plant a shot uh in the in the midst of the trying to get the uh Canelo fight, you beat him. You gave Dimitri Andrade a fight in the midst of trying to get a Canelo fight, you beat him. I think you owe it to the sport of boxing to give us one more uh step up opponent. Statement fight, legitimate fight that we all can bank our hats on and say, bro, he really liked that. Then you go see Canelo Alvarez. If you win, you become undisputed in your campaign at an early age and you get an opportunity to move on to the other divisions to go and do what you want to do. But here's the craziest thing it's looking like Dave Benavidez is talking about doing that right now. You're talking about moving on right now. Dave Benavidez, time to abandon 168 and target. Light heavyweight glory. Now, would that be considered a, a duck move if he were to leave 168 pounds before seeing David Morrell, right? Because we know, bro, if, if Benavidez beats Canelo at 168 pounds, he's not going to turn around and go see David Morrell. Why? What, what's the purpose? He brings nothing to the table. You will be in the same seat as Canelo Alvarez is right now telling Morrell he ain't did nothing in the sport, right? He ain't got nothing but 10 fights. So at the end of the day, now is the time to put it all on the line. Now is the time. That's just my opinion. Y'all can take it with a grain of salt. I would love to see this fight. Don't get it twisted. I would love to see Christian and Billy versus Dave Benavidez as well. I would, bro. I do think that Christian and Billy has the power. He would be the, the toughest power opponent that I've ever seen in the ring with Dave Benavidez. Which opens up a, a, a can of worms of can Benavidez uh, show that he have a chance, show that he have a sturdy or foundation to absorb power punches at the 175 pound limit, right? Because they hit a lot harder at 175 than they do at 168 pounds. So I would like to see Christian and Billy in the ring with Dave Benavidez. But when it comes to 168 speed and power, don't nobody compare to David Morrell. But David Benavidez, don't nobody compare it to David Benavidez, but David Morrell, it's time to get these two gentlemen in the ring ASAP as a filler fight to see Canelo Alvarez next. This is just my opinion. Can I call David Benavidez a duck? No, he deserves to see Canelo Alvarez right now. All right, let's just keep it a bean. He deserves to see Alvarez right now. But if he can't see Alvarez, ain't no point in going seeing Christian and Billy and have a fight where you could just pick your opponent apart and stay on the outside and just defend yourself at all times. People saying, tell it to Shakur Stevenson, that's boring. People told it to Teofimo Lopez, that's boring. So people going to say the same thing to you, Dave Benavidez. That's boring. Get into the ring with somebody who has just the amount of speed as you, just the amount of defensive awareness as you, just the amount of power as you. Go in there and beat that gentleman and be yelling from the rafters, bro. Canelo, if you don't see me, then you a B-word or you a P-word. No offense. I'm not saying go and disrespect Canelo, but you're going to have to to get these people to light a fire under his ass, bro. You the champ. At 168, you've been WBC champion in my eyes for at least two years now. Canelo will not see you, bruh, until you get these people to get behind you, bruh. And the only way people are going to get behind you is if you dismantle David Morrell. That's just my opinion. You guys have that one fight 
one night. The shine is on you. you. You go out to Canelo, man. If I was you, I'd show up to Canelo next fight, and I'm trying to get in the ring. I'm showing up to his next fight. I'm yelling on the side of the ring. Like, what what, what was happening with uh, Jamel Charlo and Terrence Crawford uh, when Crawford fought Errol Spence? Yeah, I, I would be doing that, bro. I mean, you got to get in Canelo's head, bro. You got to do something. So, in the meantime, between time, dismantling David, uh, David Morrell in front of the whole world would do it. But, bro, it's one of those fights where David Morrell could definitely steal this fight from David Benavidez. So, it's a dangerous fight, high risk high reward for both sides of this particular fight you guys let me know what y'all think about it man this just came to my head bro as i seen the uh the wbc chairman mauricio suleman talk about giving canelo another free fight to do what he want to do before you see dave benefit again this is the rth podcast host nephew i'm saying not y'all take it easy yeah, bro Peace. RTH Podcast going live, man, with Brawl Night Champions for members only. Party chat debate for a shot at the Community Board Champion, but remember, it's a fight, so don't get knocked out and lose your place in the ranks. Or if you're just here to be a part of the spectacle, that's cool too. Sign up for the first tier to get front row seats to each event and get exclusive content not seen on YouTube. No my tier, but don't get kicked out. See rule books for more details. Oh yeah, ladies and the legends are included if you want to spectate or go for some gold. Brawl Night Champions, sign up now.